Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. And we're back. We're live. We are young talents making way only here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm your host. And this is the show where we talk about things and science that matter to Hawaii with our brilliant school students and their science projects. Today I'm particularly excited because we're going to talk about something interesting, something very interesting, and something that we always, we often complain about, time. But what if time could actually be reversed? It is my pleasure to introduce you today to um, Aiden Chung from Roosevelt High School. Nice to have you here, Aiden. Nice, nice to have you here. Nice, uh, nice to be here. Thank you thank for having you, me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, so we're going to talk about time reversal. But what actually is time reversal? How is defined in, in physics? So for this project, what time reversal is is um, the you reverse the direction of the velocity of an object. So, for instance, if you got coffee and milk to make a latte, and then you mix them together, right? A time reversal for that would be that the you know the swirling of the milk and the swirling of the coffee, and they mix, kind of go in reverse, and they sort of unmix. So, within this project, you can think of a time reversal like that. So it's like flipping, flipping it, and we go. Or, for example, if we, if we, something fall, an object fall, it yes. sort of bounces back. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I know that um, you focused on a very particular object for time reversal. You didn't focus on cars or balls falling on the ground, but you focused on galaxies. Yes. So what is a galaxy? A galaxy you could think of as just a giant glob or cloud of stars that you are. Know, you know, um, attracted to each other gravitationally. And then um, what we did in the project is that we got two galaxies using uh, programs that were created from Joshua Barnes uh, back who, in the 80s. Who, who works was, at the Institute for Astronomy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, because he already had the materials and I was already interested in time, it was only natural for us to get to this. And then pretty much just smash galaxies together, mix them together and then just unmix them. Maybe let's see our first slide up. Let's have our first slide up so we can see. Okay, so these are two galaxies colliding, yeah? Yes. Okay, so uh, how many stars do we have as part of these simulations? Because it looks like a lot of dots. Yes, um, in total for both of the galaxies, it is a quarter of a million stars. That's impressive. Yes. So now, what are we looking at here? The two galaxies are colliding, yeah? Yes, and they're becoming one object. They're mixing together, as you can think of it. So that's, uh, if you want, these are the two objects we're studying for um, time reversal, reversing the speed of yes. these objects. So what did you do as part of your science project with these two galaxies then? So after smashing them together and then uh, periodically recording you know, the positions and the velocities of all the stars, of all these half a million stars, yeah? Yes, or a quarter of a million stars. Quarter of a million. Yeah. Uh, you take the velocity of every single star, because they're all tracing, you know, they're all going in their motion, yeah. going through a trajectory. So you flip the star's direction at the final frame of the forward run. So when everything's settled down and it's all mixed together, you wait for a certain time afterwards, then you take that you know, final state and you flip the velocities of every star in the galaxy. And what should happen, theoretically, you know, according to the Isaac Newton's uh, equations and all that, is that the two galaxies should actually, uh, it's like rewinding a video. Yeah. They should uh, go around and then finally separate and just go off in their own way. I believe we have a video about this. Let, yes. Let's have a look at it. So this is the collision, and then you basically flip the velocity of every star. Yes. So this is what we're looking at here. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and then they basically rewind back, and so, yeah, we're looking at the two galaxies separating again. And wow. going off in their own way. Yeah. Yes. But does this happen all the time, then? Every time you flip the velocities, they go back, or? Uh, surprisingly, no, it doesn't. Um, oh. For, you know, using computers and all that, that doesn't happen, even though mathematically and theoretically, that's how it should be. Yeah. And that um, you know, led to the problem. Because of the I, way I, the physics laws are defined, basically. Yes. Yeah. The physical laws are perfectly time symmetric, but time symmetric, when yeah. you use them in computers or you know, later on I'll talk about this, but when you apply them to real life, it, it's not the case. And if you take a look at the problem, 
Is there? A yeah, we have a look. Let, let's take a look at. Um, OK, um, this is, I believe, our video where we're showing a, a failed time yes, reversal, an if you want. Yeah. Reversal. This, that's an unsuccessful one. So the two galaxies stay mixed. Yes. Even if we flip the velocities. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the interesting thing is that it's like completely different. They don't stay mixed as they originally were. They just kind of separate, and then they just splat, you know, yeah. fall back into each other. So let's have um, our next slide up so we can see, we can understand more about the project, the, the problem actually you're trying to solve and you uh, to address as part of this project. Um, so these are um, what galaxies look like. Yes. So you said um, individual clusters of stars. Okay, that's the problem, yeah. Yes. So as a matter of fact, if you wait uh, too long after the two galaxies emerge and you try to you know, bring back time all the way to the point where they're separate, it would fall apart. You can't have them reverse their motion. So, this so they whole stay mixed, the yes. two galaxies. They yeah. try to separate, and then they just fall back and yeah. stay mixed. So why does this happen? Um, so uh, me and Barnes, right, as we are talking about this, we hypothesized that this was due to the lack of precision in computers. Mm. So if you take a look at the next slide. Um, Let's have a look. Let's have a look. You can see oh, okay. Google Calculator, it can't store an infinite number like pi yeah. or Euler's number. So it cuts off at a certain amount of digits. Oh, OK, yeah. And that also applies to any other computer we have. And for these calculations, uh, for something like a simulation that references back to its original state, every little cutoff at a digit adds up, like a, I got a little figure right there. Like a snowball effect. Yes. Yeah, it gets big, the error gets bigger and bigger in the, in the end. So as you uh, wait longer, the more those add up. The more the errors add up to yeah. the, oh, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it comes to a point where the whole entire system of galaxies just, you know, can't be reversed at all. Right, okay. And that's how you end up with an unsuccessful reversal. Uh, but in this slide, we're also looking at, uh, um, c we have in computers, we can store single uh, precision numbers as well as doubles. Yes. Yeah. So did you consider this as well uh, as part of the simulation? Yes. Um, that's actually the whole kind of like independent yeah. variable for it. So we ran uh, separate experiments on single precision, you know, the least precise uh, way, and then uh, double precision, the more precise you know, method of storing numbers. Right. Um, let's have a look at the next slide we have so we can learn more about the, the experiment that you actually carried out. Yes. So uh, can you tell us something about your, your methods, how you did this? All right. So um, with uh, a simulation programs yeah. made by Dr. Barnes back in the 80s. It's wow. pretty old. <laughs> uh, it was written in C, the you know, the grand language at the time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then uh, we made references to the each of those files, as you can see there, like uh, tree code underscore DP. That's uh, double precision calculations. Yeah, that's right. So these are the, the locations and velocities of all the stars in the galaxies. Yes. Yeah. Um, in fact, if you look at those uh, dot, you know, uh, those light blue. Uh, the different directors. colors of this image, yeah. Yeah, uh, over at the terminal, yeah. the light blue uh, text. So the lines of codes, basically, yeah. yeah. So that, the, that, do they tell us any information? Yes, um, they're actually directories or folders right. housing uh, dot .dat files. And these files are you know, arrays or just giant lists containing information about the position of every particle and the velocity of every particle. And then uh, you have uh, math you know, the Newton's equations and all that, that references these numbers yeah. and calculates them. Uh, how long did it take for you to complete? It seems like a hard dose task. Yes, <laughs> and that's why we have uh, computers do this. Um, even for a computer uh, back at the IFA, it took about you know, a week to two weeks. But for you to, uh, you know, take this code from back in the 80s and maybe model it and, and, and use it to actually do what you wanted to do, to simulate all the stars, yeah. how, how, how did it work? How did you actually, how were you able to work in the IFA and all that? Um, it was actually through Highstar. That's where they um, gave me the opportunity to make these connections to It's a great opportunity. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, it was made by J.D. Armstrong and Mike Nasser. You might know who those, those yeah. people are. And uh, what it is that they have you work on a project for a week, just you know, nonstop work for five hours. And then um, 
they bring in guests like mathematicians and uh, oh, wow. astrophysicists, and then they uh, have their talks. And then it gives you an, another opportunity, too, to just make conversation with these people and just really learn more about how you know, the process of being an so astronomer is... What a great opportunity yes. to learn more from professionals, and it's great that you actually got to to do this, yes. to experience this, yeah. Yeah, it is a great opportunity. Yeah. And then that overall led me to Dr. Barnes for my uh, science fair project. And then we first conversed over email, and then that's when I was able to go to his office and uh, perform these experiments. Meet him and everything, yeah. yes. So what do, what do you see in, in, as part of your future? Are you going to be an astronomer? or? <laughs> um, I actually will set my focus on uh, astrophysics or even computer science. I'm still kind of debating wow. amongst those two. And then uh, maybe perhaps after I get my undergraduates and all that, maybe I can go over to the IFA. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, do my graduate studies there. Right. Be nice. Yeah. Right, right. So let's continue to learn more about uh, your science project, reversing time in galaxies, and let's take a look at the next slide here. Um, okay, so you ran all the simulations, and then you got, wh what did you get as part of the, what, what results did you get? What data did you get from these simulations? So um, the raw data that I got is just, like I said before, the arrays, and I can use them to make uh, text files, yeah. which you can load them into IPython to make those graphs over there. Also, oh, these, um, the, the, the figure on the left is basically the two galaxies again, but the figure on the right is a graph time, and then we have expositions of the yes. stars. Yeah. Can so you describe it for us? Yeah. The expositions are the centers of the galaxies, so the brightest points on the galaxies. Oh, the center, yeah, the, yes. okay, yeah. And then you can see how, um, you can actually see how they're, it just plots their trajectory and how they try to separate. Yeah. And they go on their way. And then for a successful one, you can see them uh, go off in their merry ways. That's right, yeah. So this is um, the two center. Of, why did you consider the centers of the galaxies? Was it easier as a reference or? Yeah, it was. Because you could, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you also considered the, all of the stars as well as part of yeah. the, yeah. So all the stars are pretty much, you know, encased within that one point. So you made plots, plots and plots and plots. Of yes. All, yeah. How many simulations did you run? How many times the two galaxies collided? Um, it was, oh, you know, I've done so many of those. <laughs> I kind of lost many. count, yeah. I think if we take a look at the results. Yeah, let's have a look. Okay, so here, so we defined the, the sets of experiments with uh, um, single precisions as well as double precision experiments. Yes, so here we're looking at results from the single precision. What did you find about this? Yeah. So um, for single precision, you could see that uh, by the time you wait 20 time units, which are just arbitrary, yeah. you could think of them almost as the amount of time for the sun to orbit around the core of the Milky Way. Yeah, that's right, because um, the question I was going to ask you is, uh, Simulations are run basically uh, on a computer, so they go fast, I suppose. Yes. But in in the real universe, uh, a galaxy, two galaxies to collide, it takes a, a long time. How millions long does years. it take? Millions of years. Yes. Millions of years. And um, our galaxy, the Milky Way, is actually going is is set on a collision yes. route with the Andromeda galaxy, isn't it? Yes. And uh, if you don't want it to be that way, if you figure out how to reverse every star, every atom within the galactic group, maybe you could pull it off. <laughs> That's fascinating. But uh, how could you, uh, do you have any ideas how you could actually do this? Or if, I have if, no answers if, for that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I guess it might deal more with quantum mechanics and yeah. atoms as well. Yeah, there yeah. are some studies from physicists in the world who are trying to work with yeah. uh, quantums and other tiny particles. For I think um, there's even like research with uh, like protons for x-rays. Yeah. And then you know how they have their spin? Yeah, yeah. They actually like reverse it. And I guess to a certain degree that's like reversing their motion. Wow. Here we're talking about really advanced physics. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so what about your, um, so you carried out the simulations with single and double precision as part of this uh, computer work. What yeah. about the double? Maybe let's see our next slide so we can see. Yeah, okay. So what's the difference between the single and the double precision in these experiments? Well, the double precision, you can actually wait way longer than uh, the single precision, as you can see with you know, more rows of data. 
you know? Yeah, we saw uh, 20 was basically the single precision where, the single it, precision where it, the galaxies couldn't go back, yes. basically. Yeah. But here, okay, so you can wait longer, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then, um, just on a final note, you know, that amount swap might be uh, confusing at first. Yeah. But what is it? Yeah. It's a good metric of measuring how close you are to uh, the unsuccessful reversal or that point of no return. And what that is, is that um, when the two galaxies uh, collide and they do their thing, and you try to reverse them, some interesting thing happens when, when they finally reverse. There's some stars that are supposed to be in the red galaxy yeah. that are in the like, core of the blue galaxy. And some wow. stars in the blue galaxy that are supposed to, you know, they're supposed to be in the blue galaxy in the core of the red galaxy. Wow. This is... This is And we'll be back soon for, a, uh, we're going to take a break now. We're going to back, we'll be back soon. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness-Mark. And every Monday at 1 o'clock, I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me 1 o'clock on a Monday afternoon to Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And see you then. And we're back, we're live. We are young talents making way here on FinTech Hawaii. Today we're talking about time reversal and galaxies collision. And we have here Aidan Chun, who is enlightening us with, with this very, very interesting topic, really uh, advanced physics. Yes. Thank you for being here with us. Thank yeah. you for having me. So before the break, we were talking more, um, we were talking about uh, uh, this galaxies colliding, uh, and we mentioned uh, um, what happens with single and double precision when we yes. carry out these experiments, uh, single and double precision on computers. And uh, uh, while we were having a break, uh, you were talking, you, you were telling me more about the physical laws that you consider to run this experiment, and you focused on gravity. Yes, yeah. that was uh, the only thing I, we focused on was uh, purely that Newtonian gravity. Nothing to do with relativity or any other forces or anything so like that. So this experiment could potentially be more complicated. It could get more. Yes, it could be so much more complicated. But you know, for the sake of not having the computer burning out and the resources <laughs> that we have. That's important. <laughs> uh, we kept it strictly to the you know, classical mechanics and just gravity. Right, right. What are the implications uh, in real life uh, for this uh, time reversal studies and physics as well? So it does two things. One, that it ties the realm of computer simulations where effects are isolated with the real world. And on top of that, it also um, actually kind of tells us in re reality why we have a direction in time, why we only go forward in time. And, uh, it actually has to do with thermodynamics. Yeah. It has to do with uh, the concept of entropy. What is it? Entropy is the um, principle that everything is bound to go from a state of order to disorder. Kind of like uh, if, if you had a perfume bottle, Yeah. it's ordered when everything is within that glass bottle. But once you open that cap, you can see that everything just kind of mixes in and just... With the air, yeah, yes. and stay mixed. So there is a direction in which these things happen. Yes. And that's what entropy tells us, yeah? The, yes. From basically order to disorder in this yes. sort of sense. Yeah. And the, you know, the lack of precision, the little uh, errors that add up, you could actually think of them as a direct uh, analogy in the computers to entropy in real life. 
this is um, so it's useful basically to for computer sciences and understanding the direction of time and um, what have you learned uh, uh, while doing these experiments uh, even uh, in terms of your future career you know because carrying out this uh, I mean it's fascinating yeah it is it's really fascinating I've learned so much more than I thought you know not only just uh, you know typing up a well description of uh, this abstract concept but also uh, all kinds of programming and even how repetitive the job can be. <laughs> this programming as well is very useful because it can be applied yes. to a variety of other fields as well. Yes. Yeah. It can be applied to almost anything, you know. You know, even business and Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That, that that's the, 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 the great thing about and maybe we could reverse some of the bad businesses that we <laughs> Yeah, we could reverse uh, what happened at Wall Street and then <laughs> everything will be good. And everything. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that you also went uh, um, to the uh, State of Hawaii Science and Engineering Fair. Yes, I did. Yeah. What did you learn presenting uh, this uh, advanced physics um, research there? Um, it was mainly me refining how it were presented, because this is a pretty hard thing to grasp. That's right, I guess. <laughs> so it was that, but also uh, I had the time to actually talk with my peers and learn more about their product uh, projects. Their projects as yeah. well. Did you have any judge who <laughs> was uh, made some particularly good comments on or feedback, give you some ideas uh, for this? Oh yeah, project? absolutely. I got um, comments talking about. I think it was mainly from like mathematic point of view, where they talked about how it had a great connection to chaos theory. Oh, that's right, yeah. So they um, said that this project has a great implication in that, and just it could be applied to all kinds of things too. As well as the concept of entropy that you mentioned yes. earlier. And then even, um, I believe, don't quote me on this, but there was uh, some research on it where they used that to test out code. They bring it back to test out. Oh yeah, wow. Um, how well or the performance of their code, yeah. So here we're talking about the implications of your work. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, next, uh, what do you see next uh, uh, as part of this project itself? Are you going to consider, you mentioned you focused only on gravity, but are you going to are you going to make the experiment more complicated to test more hypotheses or? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, another thing I did too was um, me and Barnes actually dabbled with uh, satellite galaxies. So we have a satellite galaxy that is not reversed, unlike the two main galaxies colliding. So a satellite galaxy w w for our audience, w what is it? Yeah. So it's just a galaxy that's separate from the two main ones that just orbits them. It's a small cluster of stars that yes. orbits a main a big galaxy. Yeah. Yes. So how does it, uh, does it perturb the system? Absolutely. Or how does it, um, uh, what we did here was that we got three different sizes, right? Well, one big, medium, and small. For the small one, yeah. Yes, and there are all different ratios for the masses of one galaxy. And then, uh, as like proposed by Newton and all that, that's an external force, right? Perturbing yeah. uh, a system that's being reversed, and that can actually just, it just goes downhill. <laughs> The Milky Way, our own galaxy, that's the galaxy where uh, the star is part of, yes. um, has uh, two uh, dwarf galaxies as well. Um, the, um, they can be seen in the southern hemisphere here in Hawaii yes. as well. This is the sorts of things that you try to simulate, yeah, the presence of dwarf galaxies orbiting yes. the main galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do would like to say, for you know, to destroy any confusion is that none of these galaxies are based off of uh, real life galaxies. They're made based off of an equation made by uh, Walter Jaffe. It's called the Jaffe density profile. Yeah. And that's kind of just like a vanilla elliptical galaxy. That so that's how you, so um, the stars are more class, there are more stars around the center rather than, that's how you define yep. the it galaxy. It gets more sparse the farther you get from the center. Uh, but one thing I didn't ask you, um, galaxies have all sorts of different shapes, uh, the spirals or yes. elliptical galaxies or spherical. These are, you consider spherical galaxies? What kind yes, of they shape? Are. Yeah. They are uh, spherical or elliptical galaxies. This is for the sake of uh, simplicity. Yeah. Uh, you, as you can tell, spiral galaxies are a lot more harder to model. Yeah. And with elliptical galaxies, it's just as simple as applying a, a, a model like but the Jaffe potentially, you could use these equations to simulate uh, 
really hard shapes and you know oh, yeah. spirals as well. You might even be able to apply it to the Milky Way and Andromeda to see wow. how things go. Wow. That, that, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Are you planning on doing that? or? <laughs> sure. No, um, I was kind of thinking about taking it to that way or even just pursuing other projects, you know, through uh, High Star this year, too. I can make more connections. and. Yeah, because you mentioned earlier that you're going to Maui as part of this uh, training. Yeah, you yes. want to tell us more about this wonderful opportunity, I think. So um, you... For my case, I'll be staying a week at Maui, and then uh, it's kind of like a nine-to-five job for a astronomer, oh. where you go in and then it's you not know, a vacation. <laughs> it's not a vacation. It's um, it's you do a, a lot of work with uh, you know people your age. So also, this, I was going to ask you if there were astronomers or people who are already in the field. Yes. Okay. They'll be mentoring you for like a week-long project. So they're going to be mentors. They're going to be p your peers. Is it a teamwork or? Yes, it is. Yeah, you know, we usually get into like groups of three based off of the categories that we like. That's a wonderful opportunity. And it's gonna be just, intense. <laughs> yeah, it is. But I remember um, in this previous high star, the thing that uh, the only thing I survived on was loads and loads of coffee. You know, because uh, oh. you just had your computer right there, and then you do a lot of spreadsheet calculations and just. That's what every astronomer have have to do. Yeah. They're yes. Drinking. You're just drinking a bunch of coffee <laughs> and then just typing on a computer. That's amazing, yeah. Um, do you have any idea the projects you're going to work with at this? Uh... Um, I would like to work more with uh, the, these big scale projects that have simulating, to deal with simulating. Yeah. yeah, simulating galaxies and all that. So that's definitely a you know category I'll be pursuing. We have about one minute left today in our show. So what do you want to tell our audience to sort of summarize this uh, physics work that you carried out? Overall, um, if you'd like to do time travel, figure out how to reverse the motion of uh, every atom <laughs> in the universe and no exceptions. Even if you have a small fraction, thing just falls apart. and. Uh, even then, uh, time travel has limits, so you can't be like Dr. Who. That would be your job for the future. You're gonna, yes. you're gonna come back here on FinTech Hawaii to I'll tell us more about. <laughs> yes, I'll be coming back with a time machine and. And perfect. We're gonna be waiting for you. <laughs> All right. Sounds great. <laughs> thank you, Aiden. Thank you, Nai. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And you've been watching FinTech Hawaii here. Young talents making way. We're gonna be back for more. Stay tuned.